This video is different from all my other tutorials because in this video, we're gonna be bringing quick tips when it comes to graphic design and motion graphics. Now, you might be thinking graphic design and motion graphics, I'm here to do After Effects work. Well, about 50% of the work you do is like design work and it's all pretty much relatable to graphic design because you're putting together still graphics and then you animate it later. So this video is all about helping you produce better visually appealing work right here instead of After Effects. We will talk a little bit about animation, but mostly this video is all about graphic design and it does go pretty quick. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hope everyone, of course, is doing awesome today. So if you're looking to exponentially increase the value of your work, these four graphic design tips are gonna be helpful for your motion graphics. Graphic design tip number one, fonts. More specifically, typefaces. Having the right fonts for your video is extremely important. I would not be doing you justice starting off our video not talking about typefaces. So these are the four typefaces I highly suggest using if you're just starting out, whether you're just a video editor, a motion graphic artist, or if, or if you're just in the graphic design, I highly suggest these four. You can sync these up with the Adobe Creative Cloud. So essentially, if you already have the Creative Cloud, they're free. So if you're just starting out, go ahead and start syncing these up right away and start using them. I've been using these for years and I rarely ever stray away from using these. Graphic design tip number two, tracking size, AKA contrast. What we're talking about here is being able to work with words here and making typography appealing. So I have two title layers here using the typeface Montserrat and I probably butchered it. That's why I didn't pronounce any of the typefaces before but you'll see that we have multiple titles here. Even with a good typeface, this looks terrible. So what you wanna do when you have multiple words in here is create contrast. So you can grab say your first word, which might be your keyword, it can be the title of whatever you're working with. And what we'll do is we'll change this to a bold or even greater, a black font there. And boom, that's already standing out. If this was just one word, we would be looking just fine. And also this is an opportunity for you to implement your own personal style. So you see for tracking, I have mine already set at 50. You know, at default, it usually comes at zero. What I like to do is set my tracking to 50 just to add a little bit more of a unique style for my personal touch on my typefaces. I like being able to separate the characters by a little bit. And we have our second title here, which looks just terrible. What we can do is perhaps set this to a light font and we can bring down the title size because the subtitle, the second secondary titles can be a little bit smaller and it'll still look good. And so obviously I'm not gonna talk much about animation, but since we are on the topic of tracking, what we could do here, for example, is take our main title layer, come to animate and just add, let's say a track into this, which I love doing this inside of After Effects. And simply, you know, what you could do is kind of bring this inward, scrunch it up and you can add a keyframe for tracking and move forward in time and set the tracking out to be zero and then, you know, go forward in your timeline even more and ex expand the tracking even more to create a very nice subtle animation here. So boom, that will come in and do that. And these are things for you to think about when you're implementing graphic design with motion graphics right here instead of After Effects. I love being able to blend those two fields together and come up with something a little bit unique. And one last technique on the topic of title typography contrast is being able to implement some shapes in here. So for example, you can come here and grab the rectangle tool here in After Effects. And instead, we can just create a rectangle box to cover up our title. And we'll bring this layer underneath our title, of course. And come here to our subtitle layer and change the color to white. And this will allow us to create, you know, even more contrast between our main title and subtitle. And before we move further into our tutorial, I want to give a huge shout out to our After Effects extension. So this is our After Effects extension with our 100 title pack in here. And simply this extension allows us to import templates into any After Effects project we're working on. And we can apply, a, say, a title template that we want that is perfectly designed and we click on apply. And we import a full title animation template that we can adjust right here in our composition. We go into that comp and easily change out our titles. And we build our templates to allow you to easily adjust our titles. So for example, if you want to adjust the size of the graphics here, you can just come here to our control panel and boom, you bring that down and we can of course move other elements as well. And now the graphic has been resized. If we don't need a specific title, we can go ahead and turn that off. And what's great about our 100 title pack is that it doesn't change the animation whatsoever. All the animations stay exactly the same. And of course, you can easily change your colors however you see fit. And everything will update in our main composition. We have a handful of other packs as well that we can switch over to and apply elements from. You can, of course, download our freebie pack and you can get 42 free elements for absolutely free. That will be linked below. But we can come here and apply something called Accent Motion Graphics to help enhance this. 
And with a click of a button, we're able to add these accent graphics to help bring a little bit more detail to our composition. So if you're looking to save a tremendous amount of time while producing awesome work, you can take a look at any of the packs that we have off our website. I will link it below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. All right, graphic design tip number three, being able to add side elements to your work. Because, so for example, if we come here and turn off these side graphics you see here, we just have a very basic, you know, composition here and not much going on. I mean, you know, it might work for what you're doing, but with some side graphics around our composition, it kind of just helps frame it a little bit better and adds just a little bit more detail to it. And it still should make some sense to what you're doing, but you know, it's definitely something to add a little bit more intrinsic detail value to your work. So creating side graphics is simple. So for example, you just grab the pen tool and you can turn off the fill and you come in a stroke and you turn that to solid color. And all you have to do is draw out a straight line. Boom, you know, having a straight line on the side of your composition, you come here to title action safes and you can just kind of move that in there. You know, of course, if you want, you can animate that line, go to add and just add a trim paths, you know, and go ahead and set the end percent to zero. Come here, you're gonna add a keyframe for the end and set it up to 100%. You know, and now you have a line in there and that's fine. And of course you can easily take that line and you can duplicate it and you can bring it down and boom, now you're gonna have another line. So boom, now you're gonna have another line in there and that's fine. And we can maybe add a title between here, it just, you know, a title that's so small that no one's gonna read it, but it still has to go with what you're doing, right? And one thing you should do is make that title really small, right? And then, then increase the tracking all the way to the max. And then when you rotate this by hitting R on your keyboard, you rotate this, you know, inward. And then you come here and put this where you wanna be it and maybe adjust the tracking as you see fit. And one thing I would do is make it all caps that way it stands out a little bit more. And just by adding this quick side graphic and animating it any way that you see fit, it just adds a little bit more detail. And of course, there's a few more things we can do. You can do like a standard title here up the top. And all that's doing is just kind of framing all your work. And we do like maybe one more down here. And we come here and create like a little bit of a box animation here, which is nice and subtle. Just grab the rectangle tool here and we'll just draw out a box. Boom, come here to add. We'll add a repeater to this. We'll open up repeater one. Come here to transform repeater one, set the X position to zero, and we'll come here to the Y position and kind of expand that in the way that we want. We can maybe add like five or six copies in there. Come here to the end opacity and we can set that down to 0%. Boom, that creates a little bit of an offset. And simply what you do is add a keyframe four position there and move that keyframe forward and set the Y position down to zero. Boom, a little nice side graphic there to kind of help you frame this entire composition together. And it looks really nice having a little bit more graphic design elements in your composition that help complement your work. Our final graphic design tip is background design. There's so much you can do with this. I want to show you two background techniques where you can help take your work to the next level because without, you know, just having a little bit of background elements in here, it's still kind of plain and boring. But adding just a little bit in there, man, it makes a big difference. So, so for example, if you like dots, you know, who doesn't like dots? Go up to layer, new, solid, and we'll come here to effect, simulation, and we're going to grab uh, CC starburst. Okay. Set the scatter down to zero. And we'll come here to the size. You can bring this down. That looks amazing. Just having that in there. But you can, you know, increase the spacing by a little bit if you want these to be a little bigger, or you know, the spacing, and then readjust the size as you see fit. And kind of help frame this a little bit better. What I would do is, you know, we can grow the rectangle tool, and we'll just create this, you know, mask or a box around our words here to kind of frame this a little bit better. And then I would just take the rectangle tool again, right, and kind of just mask out between our words here and set that one to subtract and what's going to happen boom this is going to be cut out and that looks so much better i would make some adjustments to this you know kind of refine the mask by a touch and i would kind of set it to where this looks the best but just having these elements here makes a big difference if you know or if you don't like the dipping dots feel and i don't know if dipping dots are still popular or not you could just use lines or any other shapes instead than just using that starburst effect for a creative background design so that's our four graphic design tips for motion graphics. Of course, we have a handful of other ones. So if you want to watch more videos like this, be sure to leave a comment down below and let us know, hey, I want more graphic design videos for motion graphics. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below and always be creating.